I want to welcome everybody to His Glory Ministry. Tonight we are going to have uh, a word, uh, the word of His glory. And tonight we're going to talk uh, briefly about seven signs of a wolf in sheep's clothing. Uh, that would be including uh, the false teachers. Uh, as we know, as we follow scripture, we are in the end times and the Lord and uh, many of his uh, disciples and apostles uh, warned us, especially in Peter, um, to look out for the, the church becoming apostate and look for the false teachers. So we're going to give you seven, seven different uh, things to look for that I saw in an article from... Um, uh, a Colin Smith, and I thought it was very good, and we'll, we'll, we'll pass that on today. Uh, before we get into this, though, we pray that the Holy Spirit will be uh, upon you in this teaching of the Lord, as the Word of God is our only truth, and that is going to be the key thing for us in this message today, to know that God's Word is truth, and we, the, our only teacher is not a, and not a theologian, or not a doctorate, or some denomination. It is Jesus Christ in His lit, literal, infallible Word, and it's the Holy Spirit. Through the, through, through the Spirit that teaches us the Word of God so that we cannot be fooled. As the Scripture says, even the, fool, even the elect would be fooled if it were possible. And it's not possible for those of us who are in our Word, in, uh, in prayer diligently, and we know the Word of God so that we can, we can test these false teachers and uh, we'll get into these seven, uh, seven signs in just a moment. I want to reiterate re, uh, the His Glory Creed, and this is what our ministry is all about. And this also happens to be seven as well. And again, seven is a number of completion. Number one, the Bible is the literal, infallible Word of God. No ifs, ands, or buts. God's Word is truth. He means what He says, and He says what He means. We take it literal, and it's infallible. As in 2 Timothy 3.16, all, all, all God's, word, God's word is God-breathed for doctrine to show us what is right, uh, to show us when we go off the path, to get it back on the path, and to stay on path always. And that's 2 Timothy 3.16. You notice it says, all scripture is for doctrine, not cutting and pasting of what we think uh, as man should be. It's all scripture, God breathe. Number two, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Prayer is the foundation of all ministry. Again, with the word of God, reading the word of God is number one. It's so important to understand God's word, but prayer is right there as well. And that's why we call ourselves a house of prayer. Number three, we are led by the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. The, the Holy Spirit is our comforter. The Holy Spirit is our guider in all things for his glory. Um, number four, we have the Father's heart for the lost, the poor, the elderly, the widows, and the orphans. It's the heart of the Father. It's not for works. It's because we love God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit so much that our heart bleeds and cares for those who are in need. And that is the second part of the greatest commandment. As Jesus said, number one, love the Lord God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Number five, we will be called the servants of the Most High God. We are here to serve Him in ministry. We are not disciples of, or we're not uh, directors of worship. I am not a, I don't have, uh, call myself a doctorate of theology, a master's of theology, a pastor, a reverend. Uh, a father? No, I am a servant, and that's all I do is serve the Most High God. And six, in everything we do, we glorify our Lord. It is our love for Him that compels us. We do it because of love, not because we have to. We love Him, and that's what compels us in this ministry. And seven, it's the fivefold ministry according to Ephesians 4.11. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors, and the teachers. So that is the creed of his glory. That's what we are all about. And let's get into this article that came across, uh, starting with number one. Um, these are, again, seven, thing, seven signs to look for uh, of a wolf in sheep's clothing or a false teacher. Number one, different source. Where does their message come from? Uh, the, uh, the Apostle Peter says, uh, the disciple Peter, uh, Jesus' disciple Peter says, we did not follow cleverly invented stories when we, were, we told you about the power and the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, Peter 1.16. Then he says that false teachers exploit you with stories they have made up, uh, 
chapter 2, verse 3. So the true teacher's source is what he says from the Bible. The false teacher relies on his own creativity. Again, Peter is saying truth is from God's inspired word. False teacher re uh, relies on creativity, taking the Bible out of context, stretching 90% of truth and bringing in 10% of their own doctrine or their own theology. That is man-made theology. And it's God's book. It's, uh, he wrote it, and we are to be obedient to it and, um, and, and, and be thankful that we have the Word of God to keep us on the straight and narrow. Number two, different message. What is the substance of the message? For the true teacher, Jesus Christ is central. Christ is the central key of everything in the Bible. Jesus Christ, if you put, take any book of the Bible, you can put Jesus Christ in the center of it and you show the love. Even in the first covenant, the Old Testament, screams of Jesus Christ all the way through it. He is our kinsman redeemer. He is our, 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 our goal and he is our salvation for eternal life. Uh, the article goes on. We have everything we need for life and godliness in, in him. Uh, chapter 1, verse 3. For the false teacher, Jesus is at the margins. They will s secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who brought them. Uh, chapter 2, verse 1. Notice the word secretly. It's rare for someone in church to openly deny Jesus. Movement away from the, centra the centrality of Christ is subtle. The false teacher will speak about how other people can help can change your life. But if you listen carefully to what he says, you will see that Jesus Christ is not the essential to the message. And Christ is the only changer of lives. Everything else of a change of a life is a motivational speaker. It's inspiration. It's done through uh, adrenaline. It's an emotional change. Taking Christ in as your Lord and Savior is a, is a, is a, is a, a change that goes throughout your entire body that is far deeper than any emotion that has highs and lows. It's for eternity. The Holy Spirit indwells with you and is your comforter and protector for eternity. And that's why we have to keep our body strong. That's why we have to keep the, the elements of, of um, the, the, the evil warfare, Ephesians 6.10, the elements of warfare that we're always uh, uh, on, the, on, the, on the guard from the evil one's attack. Number three, different position. And what position will the message leave you? The true Christian escapes the corruption in the world by evil desires. Uh, chapter 1, verse 4. Listen to how Peter describes the counterfeit Christian. They promise freedom. Why, they, why themselves are slaves of, and, and deprived? For a man is a slave to whatever has mastered him. Chapter 2, verses 19. The true believer is escaping corruption while the counterfeit believer is mastered by it. Again, the truth will set you free, and the truth is the only one, the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ and the Word of God. Number four, different, uh, different character. What kind of uh, people does the, the, the message produce? The true believer pr pursues goodness, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. Uh, chapter 1, verse 5. The counterfeit Christian is marked by arrogance and slander, chapter 2, verses 10. They are experts in greed, and their eyes are full of adultery, chapter 2, verse 14. Number five, different appeal. Why, why should you listen to the message? The true teacher appeals to scripture. We have the word of the prophets made more certain, and you will dwell to pay attention to it, chapter 1, verse 19. God has spoken, and the true teacher appeals to his word. The false teacher makes a rather different appeal by appealing to the lustful desires and the sinful human nature that entice people who are just escaping from those who live in error. Uh, Peter, uh, Peter uh, chapter 2, verse 18. Again, prosperity Christianity uh, that, um, you know, making you feel better, all about me, 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 me. That's not what the Word of God is all about. The Word of God is about putting self last, putting Christ first, and putting brother and sister in love second. And that is the, that is the love of the church that Christ has, has indwelled upon us. It's not about us. It's about giving self up for His glory. Number six, different fruit. What result does the message have in people's lives? The true believer is effective and productive in his or her knowledge of Jesus Christ. Uh, chapter 1, verse 8. The counterfeit is like a spring without water. 
chapter 2, verse 17. This is an extraordinary picture. They, they, they promise much, but produce little. So he, he's quoting, it's like a spring without water. It's the ap- opposite of the living water, Jesus Christ. His water is eternal. His water is everlasting. His water continues to feel, feel, fuel us. Um, through life's, um, life, life's obstacles. And he is the only way to true peace and happiness and obviously the only way to eternal life through the one and only door, through the blood of our, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And that will end in number seven, different end. Where does the message ultimately lead, lead you? Here we find the most disturbing contrast of all. The true believers re- will receive a rich welcome in the eternal kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's chapter 1, verse 11. The false believers will experience, experience a swift destruction. Uh, chapter 2, verse 1. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them and their destruction has not been sleeping. Chapter 2, verse 3. Jesus tells us that there will be many who have been involved in ministry in his name to whom he will say, depart from me, I never knew you, Matthew 7, 21. And that, again, is if you study our, our studies, our, our series in uh, the book of Matthew and the book of Revelation that we're going through right now with his glory ministry, um, you're going to see, when I've mentioned many times, that um, one, of the, one of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain, is not a vocabulary term. It means when we become ambassadors of the Most High God, we don't do it for vanity. We don't do it for money. We don't do it for power. We do not do it for image. We do it for the love of Christ. It's the love for Him that compels us. And with that love, the fruit will blossom out of you naturally. People around you will say, that person's different. They don't, they, don't, they don't change and adapt to the way the world is. They walk a different path, and their light cannot be put out exactly the way Christ told us. And brothers and sisters, we're going to end it at that. This is a time and place where there are many false teachers out there. And Christ warned us in his, in, in his book, in his word, of, in his truth, uh, to look out for these false teachers. And if you know the word of God and you take these seven key elements and you measure them, you'll know what truth is. And anybody that tells you there's any other way to heaven other than the blood of Jesus Christ, you know that's wrong. There is only one way. It's Jesus Christ who's died for our sins, past, present, and future, is the only way to heaven. It's not Jesus Christ plus this denomination, plus this church, plus this work, plus anything. It's the gift of salvation through the repentance of our sins through the blood of our Messiah, Jesus Christ, once and for all. And with that, we get the free gift. And that gift comes into our heart with eternal life with the Most High God. And what pours out of our heart is the fruit of the Spirit. And that's where the works come out. The works come out because of our love not because we're earning anything to get there. I hope this has been a blessing to you. Again, the inspired word of God. I, I, I pray that each and every one of you are, are, are in the word every day. Again, as we've mentioned many times in these broadcasts before, uh, I truly believe this, brothers and sisters, that reading and praying over the word of God every day is more important than physically eating food and drinking of drink. It's more important because our spiritual livelihood, our spiritual sense to have intimacy with the Most High God takes precedent over anything and everything. And if we're not in the Word, that's where Satan will attack us. That's where deception will come. And that's again where the Scripture says even the elect would be fooled if it were possible. But it can't be possible for those who believe in the infallible, literal Word of God because we are breathing in to our heart, his eternal truth. I pray this has been a blessing to you, and may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless each and every one of you to the next time that we bring out the word of his glory. Amen.